If you have edited with older versions of Final Cut Pro, like Final Cut Pro 7 or earlier, you may have been used to the ability to rearrange Final Cut's interface really anywhere you want. In Final Cut Pro 7, the what's now known as the browser and the project area for your timeline, the viewer, all of these windows were separate windows. They weren't just one window, one area. You could actually move these anywhere you'd want. And if you're used to other editing applications, uh, this is very common. Like if you're an avid media composer, if that's what you use, uh, you can move each one of those windows anywhere you want across multiple displays, and it's very customizable. However, Final Cut Pro 10, when that was introduced, it introduced this ability to have one window to contain everything. So what I mean by this is if I click and drag from one of the corners to resize and shrink down this window, we see this one window as the area. And uh, it's not break apart, like I can't break it apart, it's not separate windows, and you're kind of stuck in this one window view. However, it is extremely customizable. So I wanna talk about workspaces in this video. I'm gonna hold the option key and click on the green plus at the top left here to maximize this window. You can always go up here to the green and go full screen as well, which will take advantage of the screen uh, fully, but I usually like to use it in this way with it maxed out. And as far as customizing your workspace, there's a few ways to do it. First, there's these three buttons at the top right. And these let you hide some of the areas of Final Cut Pro 10. So you can hide the inspector, show or hide the inspector. You can show or hide the timeline at the bottom. And you can show or hide the browser on the left side. Each one of these, if you hover your arrow across it, you'll see the tooltip with the shortcut. So Control Command 1 hides the browser. Control Command 2, the timeline. Command 4 goes into showing and hiding the inspector. So if you do Command 4, on and off, we see or hide the inspector. If you go to the window menu at the top, this is where you can really start to customize your workspace. So we have show in workspace, and this shows the various areas of Final Cut. And we can see all those shortcuts that we we're seeing before. So if I wanted to click on the sidebar, if I click that, you'll notice it hides the sidebar, the browser sidebar. Or if I don't want the browser at all, I could do it right from this window menu. Obviously, just a second ago, we were using these buttons on the toolbar, but you could go up here into Show and Workspace to do that. Some people like to see an event viewer, which is this second window here. And what happens with the event viewer, you actually have a second area. So you can preview your clips that are in the browser and see and compare what's on the timeline. So we have a viewer on the right for the timeline and a viewer on the left for the browser. So that's what your event viewer is. And you can show that right here in Show and Workplace. We get the Show Event Viewer. Uh, definitely go through. You can go and see the timeline index. If you want to enable that, you have a button in the, uh, you have a button on the toolbar to do it, but you can also do it up here in the Show and Workplace. And audio meters, I get a lot of this question is they see the audio meters on the side show up and they didn't want to see those. Um, you can see here if I uh, add a clip here, uh, this audio meters is the, the sound effect that's here. So if we do dog, we can see the dog audio on the right. You can use this button here to show or hide that. Um, but these are all things that you can create right up here and, and customize with the show and workspace menu. Uh, the shortcut I really want to show, uh, show off here, though, is under Workspaces. And I use this one all the time, which is Command-0. So we're going to use Command-0 here because I just made a lot of customizations to the workplace and do Workspace. And Command-0 switches us back to the default Workspace. However, if you don't like the default Workspace, you can, like we've been seeing, you can go through here and resize these windows and adjust them uh, to your liking. But doing all those little adjustments... Uh, can get annoying if you're doing it all the time. So go up to Window and use these workspaces. There's an Organize Workspace, which hides the timeline at the bottom and adjusts the windows a little bit. But for me, I very rarely use the Inspector when I'm initially organizing. And I, I usually like to resize this to shrink down the viewer a little bit. I'll get rid of the library sidebar. Like this is the workspace I'm used to using when I when I organize. At least that's how I do it. I don't I don't know how do you do it. You can leave a comment below. 
but this is how I like to organize. So with it customized, I can go up to this workspaces menu and I'll choose save workspace as. And I'm gonna call this Jared Organize. This is how I like to organize. So now under window menu, I have a Jared Organize. I can switch back to default, command zero to switch back to default. Or if I'm ready to organize now, I can go back to workspaces, click Jared Organize, and notice it readjusts it to the way I left off with it set up just like this. So that's what workspaces are. You can look at it and see what color infects as an example. We see all the, the, uh, the scopes are available there, um, all the other information. It brings up the effects because a lot of times you'll be applying color effects and color filters and things like that. So these workspaces are, are pretty nice. But then we get down to dual displays. And you won't be able to see this uh, in the video here because we're just sharing this one screen. But if you do have a secondary monitor plugged into your computer, you'll see this menu as well on the timeline. And this allows you to show or hide the second display view. And if I click on this, what you'll see is the viewer is no longer visible in this window. And that's because the viewer moved over to my second display. Again, if I hold Control-0, or sorry, Command-0, to switch back to the standard view, it brings everything back, and I don't see anything on my second display. But we can use this. We can say I want to show the browser, for example, on the second display. And now the browser that used to be at the top left is on that second display. And that's very useful because it's taking advantage of a second monitor or second screen using those uh, workspaces. And just like we saved this organize uh, workspace, you can do a second display, customize things, and save it over there as well. So that's working with and kind of customizing the workspace that you see here. Just a few other quick tips. If you are working with a, a, a like a broadcast monitor, a dedicated uh, video output monitor, you'll have options for the AV output, and you'll be able to show that on a second display. Uh, you can also do this with a VR headset. If you're working with 360 videos, that'll be something you'll want to get into and use. Uh, I'm not going to cover that in here, but that's an option. And then the last thing, if you are working in, in any view, you can do it as a dual screen view, uh, like I'm here with the second screen shows my browser. You can still resize your uh, primary window in the main display here. So I've seen some people, they'll have a script in uh, like Final Draft, or maybe they have a PDF file, a document they're following along with notes. You can resize it so that that other window is here on the left while you're editing here on the right side. Just remember, all of these adjustments you make to the window, you can go up to Window, the Window menu, and save them as a custom workspace. That way you can very easily and quickly switch between these custom workspaces. So just by clicking the one button, it adjusts it, goes to that workspace. Even though I've resized this window, it's made the custom workspace sizable for that window there. And then you can, uh, with these workspaces, you can go into these ones and save them and update them and open them in the Finder as well. This is something that uh, if you're working on your own machine all the time, not really that important. But if you do the open workspace folder, this folder that comes up has those custom workspaces that we just did. So these little files here are the, those saved workspaces, and you can copy those, say, to a USB thumb drive or maybe your online storage, and then when you go to someone else's editing machine, uh, editing station, you can just copy this workspace onto it, and boom, you're right back there. If you have 10 different workspaces, they're all loaded right onto that machine for you. So this is how you can collaborate uh, with other people and other workspaces, other machines, by bringing your own workspaces to them. Uh, hopefully this uh, video was helpful for you. If it was, give it a thumbs up. If there's something else you'd like to learn, leave a comment below or send an email to finalcutprohelp at me.com. Thanks, everyone.